beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed and stay blessed. Please pray, don't be tired. This is part of the meeting. When you give yourself holy, your profiting will appear. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a song of Spirit, and I want us to start from there tonight. Let's start from verse 2. Habakkuk was a scripture that just came to my spirit while we were worshiping. Verse 2 O oh Lord, I have heard of thy speech and was afraid. Listen carefully. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Verse 3. God came from Teman and the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens and the earth. Was full of his praise. I wish we can get verse 4 in Amplify. It says, And his brightness was as the light. God bless you. Give us verse 4 please. Amplify just verse 4. Let's read together if you are a believer in this place. One to read. And his brightness was like the sunlight. Rays streamed from his hands. And there in that light is the hiding place of his power. There is a place where the power of God hides. There is a place where the might of God hides. When a man accesses that dimension, he says there, in that light that came out of his hand, is the hiding place of his power. Please sit down. 
if you can just for a few minutes i welcome every one of us inside outside those following us online to our april miracle service the lord bless you bless you in the name of jesus we're happy to have prophet jangfa with us bless you jangfa thank you so much hallelujah and i think scattered somewhere debbie should be somewhere one of the old faces i hope she's around uh Philip chin also there are a number of old faces i honor you god bless you and every man and woman of god in the name of jesus christ the lord will do a very quick work with us tonight and um he has begun that quick walk praise the lord there is a system in the dealings of god with man that until we know and understand we will never as individuals and as a corporate people be able to enter into I, I love i love you hear that word often hear the possibilities of god you see um limitation is a very dangerous thing in life because it covers you from seeing what else is obtainable and the danger of limitation is that the moment you cannot see more your limitation becomes your reference are we together so when we talk about the possibilities of God it's an attempt to stretch us beyond the standard we have known about God beyond the things that we have seen you will only believe God to the limit of what you know or think he can do you cannot believe God beyond the level of your perception and your understanding of his ability my faith and your faith is hinged primarily on my perception of how mighty God is so the apex of his might as defined by my understanding is the limit of my faith are we together now you have to understand this so the difference between any two people is not necessarily their makeup it's not even the will of God it is the dimension of access they have had to the revelation of God access to the mysteries of the kingdom that will separate them into different dimensions the Bible says in that light was the hiding place of his power there is a relationship in the kingdom between light illumination and dominion and power not just dominion in talk the experience of walking in the power the authority and the glory of the kingdom in John chapter 1 verse 5 the Bible says and the light shines in darkness in fact I like it from verse 4 verse 4 says that in him was life listen carefully in him was life then it says that life was the light of men now this is a revelation i can dwell here all through that means when light enters you it changes to life it is light in the exterior but the moment it enters you it translates into life in him was life but when that life was revealed it became light unto men then it says that light has capacity to shine in darkness not discuss with darkness not negotiate with darkness and the bible says and the darkness comprehended it not i've shared it with us here and there again and again that dominion is not an impartation there is no special gift of dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your accurate comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom when you understand the systems of the kingdom and you have sustained grace from God to be able to apply your life will become nothing short of dominion it's not a a privy thing to a few people no there's no impartation for dominion dominion authority exercising kingdom authority is a product of understanding are we together let me tell you something I have discovered in my life 
by the grace of God in this ministry and around the lives of many great people including our fathers of faith that for any sustainable result in your life it must be built on understanding you can step into a reality based on your alignment with certain kingdom principles like the covenant of a man are we together the servant of Elisha came and Elisha used his covenant with God to open his eyes but the Bible never said his eyes remain open you can step into certain possibilities even because of the kind of atmosphere you find yourself but for anything to be sustainable it must be backed up by understanding it must be backed up by illumination fear this thing we call fear is a spirit but the character of that spirit is such that it takes advantage of darkness when your life is barren of truth and illumination then it magnetizes that spirit and then it puts your life in fear and in bondage the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime in subject to bondage so much more than the miracles you will receive and we trust god that there be an outpouring in this place tonight i love to see the power of light over darkness it never bores me to see the victorious power of the lord jesus christ at work in the midst of his people how an age-long situation can live overnight at the instance of a revealed word backed up you see the power is revealed through understanding it's not the activity doing spiritual things does not bring power it is understanding understanding is the key that connects the realm of the spirit and the problem in need of the touch of god understanding hallelujah knowledge is very important i'm saying this because we must cultivate a passion much more than receiving miracles much more than wanting impartation much more than a healing a deliverance we must cultivate an appetite not just for rema no no the word that must be understood and the end of understanding is when you know your role in the performance of that equation if you don't know your role you do not understand it the end of understanding is when my part of partnership is revealed to me no matter what you study no matter what you claim to know about God if you have not found your place what you ought to do to make it happen brothers and sisters you will never see the outstretched arm of God I am convinced that what we lack in our generation is not illumination no more than ever before there is no time in human history when information and truth from scripture is made available to people there are electronic devices there are different kinds of bible study works programs commentaries that have already been brought what people lack is understanding so it robs them of entering the experience of what they claim to know and it is dangerous to know a thing and lack the power of performance it is more frustrating it is better to be ignorant but that you know a truth you know a scripture you know that this is a possibility in god but you lack the understanding of how to make it manifest in your life hallelujah illumination light the difference between any two people in the kingdom yes we say it is grace yes we say it is anointing but remember the scripture says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge there is a kind of knowledge not through any knowledge there is an exact understanding that delivers exact results you can know a dimension of God it will never mean you will see everything through the knowledge there is the knowledge that brings signs and wonders there is the knowledge that brings victory in certain areas there is the knowledge that brings prosperity and increase there is the knowledge that brings honor and influence there is the knowledge that multiplies the anointing 
so your appetites must be stretched with God to access the knowledge that is responsible for the outcome you desire many of us know what we want but we do not know what it takes to deliver the result this is where the challenge is if I call everyone at random here and I say stand up what do you want very few people will be in ignorance as to what they want someone will say I want a child another person will say I want to come out of poverty another person will say I want a supernatural anointing upon my life another person will say I want God to wipe my tears another song like our awesome worship team Sam beautify my life another person will say Lord take away shame and reproach from my life all these are possibilities that are within the context of the might of God but the key is there is the knowledge that will deliver that result you can have the knowledge that delivers to you the results to be free from barrenness but it will never prosper you you can have the knowledge that will give you a lot of money and financial prosperity but you will never carry the anointing to release supernatural possibilities to people you may never see the gift of the spirit work in your life it is important that we realize that light or the absence of it is the reason behind the challenges of many people gathered here tonight yes demon spirits yes principalities and powers but i've taught us here again and again that a stronghold is never a stronghold until there is a faulty mindset a stronghold is when spirits come and create fortification around a pattern of thinking and understanding it is that state that is capable of making the word of God of non effect in the life of a man. Are we together now? Demons don't just veto you and act anyhow, they thrive upon your ignorance. Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything. It is a possibility that Satan comes, meaning when Satan comes, his character is to search for what in your life reflects darkness because he is darkness. So he finds an area of ignorance and that becomes his access point in your life. No matter how much you are excelling in another area, it is possible. So this answers the question once and for all, can a believer still be under the yoke of darkness? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. On the strength of insufficient renewal in, the, in a dimension, it will authorize the gates of hell to rubbish your life until light bails you out. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. It has become a national anthem here. By the way, if you've not listened to the last two series that we've had, I think that they are very phenomenal. They are very epochal. I challenge you, especially for those of you, um, those of us online and those of us who are coming here for the first time please get it and listen are we together now spiritual intelligence and the mystery of exemption you have to listen to it hallelujah first corinthians did i do something wrong again four i think i wrote it down here let's look at it ephesians i'm sorry ephesians 4 18 it says having their understanding darkened having their understanding darkened listen then it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them so although you are a possessor remember our teaching the epistle of john this is the record it's a testimony it's a legal document that god has given us the way that divine life then it says that life is in his son so when you encounter the son you have the life but the bible says ignorance can alienate you from the experience of the possibilities that come with that life so i am a possessor of that life but it is possible i can die ss or as i am a possessor of that life but i can die barry i am a possessor of that life and i can never rise in certain superior dimensions of the anointing i am a possessor of that life but that life is released through knowledge through knowledge through knowledge never forget this there are many people who claim and boast that they are carrying the life of god 
but the experience of their lives do not show that such a possibility exists within them knowledge knowledge in fact i love the way i think it's isaiah 33 please give us isaiah 33 i hope i'm right um isaiah it should be help me holy spirit isaiah 33 uh, it should be five or six isaiah 33 five or six it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times that's right and wisdom and knowledge shall be what the stability when you find out that there is no dimension of stability in a man's life it is because there is no wisdom and there is no knowledge these two instruments in the spirit govern stability and establishment in the life of a man in the life of a people wisdom and knowledge Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet was lamenting and it's a very interesting scripture because he starts saying my people my people so we're not talking of those alienated from the commonwealth of Israel my people he says are destroyed not because of Satan for lack of knowledge that means a believer can sustain an understanding and then alongside the grace that comes with that understanding and it will literally paralyze the possibilities of Satan within your life and within your vicinity there is such a reality in the spirit that a man can live free of the dominion of Satan and everything he represents hast thou considered my servant Job and Satan testified that I came around him and I could not break that hedge he said is it not because you have set a hedge God did not only do it to Job Job knew the secrets that would compel that hedge to be there he says in the days of my youth when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle that was the secret Job knew what to do whilst his children went for party he offered sacrifices in advance wisdom understanding he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea, durable riches and righteousness brothers and sisters listen to me let me tell you something as powerful and mighty as God is the ultimate key to confidence the ultimate key to being mightily used by God much more than just submitting to him which is important is that you must have a passion not for careless random spiritual knowledge not everything spiritual is useful for the dimensions you seek to enter i've given us an example if i go to the market and my goal is to make fried fried rice if i see yam will i buy it is yam bad but it's not part of the ingredients required for what i desire if i'm passing around and i see very red palm oil very good one should i buy it well i don't know whether they make fried rice with palm oil but i don't think so so i pass it is that true now when your journey in the spirit becomes such that you are attracted by everything spiritual two things will happen to you number one you will be puffed up with knowledge that is random and cannot produce your results number two your pace will be slowed down you need to have a specific understanding in this season of my life i desire to rise in unction and grace and you limit yourself to the supply of understanding that is responsible for the delivery of that result there are books i've bought for up to two years i've not read them it's not spiritual carelessness the dealings of god with me does not require me to touch those materials now so they are there they are useful but not needed in my work now the times God will shift in that dimension, then I will pick up those books. Knowledge. Very quickly before I pray for you, I want to give you four areas that I believe every believer that wants to do mighty things through and in God in this season must be able to access. Write it down quickly. Number one, in the beginning, God any believer that wants to be mighty you want to walk in the anointing you must have a revelation of god you must know who god is you can know about me by reading my books but you have to meet me to know me 
and the bible tells us that jesus has come as the expression of the fullness of the image of god so as i study the life of jesus christ i have an understanding of who god is you see the bible is a compendium of god revealed in different dimensions so that as i study the bible and as i trust the presence of the holy spirit to reveal the reality of jesus to me certain things about god listen if you are coming for koinonia right now and someone stops you by the road and says apostle said koinonia will now hold in pz you're not going to listen to that person because that communication based on me that you know that communication is not consistent with how i will behave if there is a need to change venue we have a more intelligent system of communicating it is that true so because of your access to the knowledge of me you know what is not me is that true but if you are a visitor who is coming for the first time never seen me and someone stopped you and said look i think you need to reverse you will go in obedience but you are obeying a wrong information so it's not just obedience it has to be obedience to the right thing there are too many people who are obedient to wrong informations and then they say lord i'm obedient <laughs> you must understand god and understanding jesus christ together with everything that redemption brings and together with every reality that comes today in christ this is the foundation for the victory of a believer you must be able to know who god is what jesus christ represented while he walked on the earth and what he means to you now and the quality of life we have discussed it what the bible calls eternal life remember i told you it's not eternal life everybody has eternal life everybody has everlasting life that rendition is the best of the translators eternal life is a possibility once you are born the parable of the rich fool and lazarus they all left this realm to another dimension of living and they were all alive could speak so everyone has eternal life and then so way i told us let me just do a, a quick recap that zoe is not just a life superior to the human life because there are many lives that are superior to the human life money alone can create a possibility in your life where the quality of your life becomes higher than that of an average human being you don't have to be born again just that quality are we true divination can open you up to certain possibilities in the spirit where your life becomes higher in quality than that of a human life but it's not eternal life it was john that described to us he said this life is a derivative of an encounter with a person if for any reason you find out that you are living in a higher dimension of living above the normal human life but is outside of an encounter with a person your life is higher than a human life but it is not the way and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath that life you must know this because that light that enters you is what becomes your life that's what immunes you so you are able to manifest possibilities that are not privy to the average human being then you will know that it's possible to walk in health it's not just a, a, an issue of i won't be sick uh -uh. it's not just jacking yourself in empty confusion confession no then you will know that you are able to rise above situations and circumstances not just by empty confession but an experience that is now your reality number two quickly the second dimension of knowledge that i think we need is the knowledge of the holy spirit the holy spirit the holy spirit very few people truly know the Holy Spirit. Many people know about him. There are all kinds of theological exegesis about him. You must know his person and you must know his ministry. Jesus took out time in John 14, 15, 16 to introduce us to this personality called the Holy Spirit. And the Bible makes us to understand that the success of Jesus was entirely because of the Spirit of God. 
it's impossible to be mighty upon the earth ignoring him receiving the baptism of the holy spirit is not knowing the holy spirit praying in tongues is not knowing the holy spirit walking in miracles is not knowing the holy spirit the holy spirit is a person you can know him you can understand his ministry what a joy your life will be a wonder when you know the holy spirit are we together you must know the holy spirit especially if you are in ministry listen i have learned by the grace of god and by experience that the absence of certain things can never be replaced by certain others oratory will never replace the absence of the holy spirit are we together going to school and reading well will never replace the person and the ministry of the holy spirit kneeling down and asking people to give you impartation will never replace a personal press for an encounter and a knowledge with the holy spirit miracle signs and wonders will never replace him you can fake power you can't fake his presence are we together you must press to know the holy spirit i study god's generals and every time i have an opportunity to look at materials that make reference to them one thing was common between them regardless of their limitations and their temperaments they really knew him and their knowledge of the spirit brought accuracy in their lives they did mighty things that we are blessed you must know the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a personality to be known by men of god and miracle workers no the holy spirit is not a personality that should be known by apostles prophets teachers evangelists pastors no the holy spirit is the key to living and when he the spirit of truth is come the bible says he will guide you into all truth he will guide you hallelujah holy spirit can you pray one minute and say holy spirit reveal yourself to me reveal yourself to me reveal yourself to me oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever serve you Oh God, you are my God And I will ever follow Lord, I will seek you in the morning I will learn to walk in your ways For step, step by, by step you lead me And I will follow you all of the way That's where we are bankrupt, no direction We guess our lives and do everything And your lifetime is too small for error your lifetime is too small for repeated mistakes there must be a system in god for accuracy in ministry in family life your vocation whatever it is you cannot live your life just based on science there is a way that seemed right unto a man but there is a personality for step by step you lead me i admit i'm ignorant but step by step you lead me and i will follow that's my part i won't be too ignorant i won't be too arrogant when he leads me i follow maybe a stupid instruction but i'm too young to question him he's the spirit of the father i trust him you trusted a lecturer who is less than 20 years older than you you trusted a man who called himself your father not more than 30 years older than you and here comes one who was in the beginning the first personality of the trinity revealed 
and he comes to hold your hands and he said look i took a very frail man called moses and i guided him brothers and sisters this thing is not just skill and talent alone is the foolishness of submission to a personality not a power not just an influence a person some of us have foolishly followed him for years with stupid instructions admitting our ignorance in the the midst of a proud world oh god you are my god just the same and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning i will seek you in the morning and i will learn to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and i will follow all of my days from tonight step by step you lead you and i will follow you the holy spirit was with was with god when they were discussing your destiny it's a foolish thing to not need him in building it no if i was responsible for designing a curriculum and you ignore me when it comes to execution it is called pride i was in my mother's womb when he designed me i called you i ordained you so you walk with me and say holy spirit i don't know my way i don't know my way many people claim is their power and their might many people claim i understand church planting many people claim i know how to be a man of god but can you humble yourself and press for the knowledge of him the knowledge of the holy spirit will require time and it will require submission one thing i know about the holy ghost is he hates arrogance the holy spirit hates arrogance when he comes to you you are not colleagues he's not in you as a tenant he's in you as the landlord what will happen tonight brothers and sisters is credited to him it is him that reveals jesus here look how many of us have wasted time listen to me i'm speaking to you there are many of us seated here you would have been working in your destiny already five years from now but this stubbornness of of not listening to him oh holy I, 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 all these church things no he told you go and serve in church by now certain things in your life would have gone ah. we wait on you lord we wait on you I wait on you, Lord, we wait on you. I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. That's what I've done with my life. That's what we've done with Koinonia. Fill this temple with your presence. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait. Open up my destiny. You are the only one who can open up my destiny. Whatever level you are, just walk with him. 
you may have no iota of unction right now forget about anointing be foolish enough to hold him let him lead you let others go just walk with him you may be behind but brothers and sisters there is an unction he will put something upon your life that will shake the nations and take away the boastings of men God is never too slow with men never too slow if he's the one that kept you know you are faster faster than anything you can imagine faster there are many arrogant pastors claiming that they want to do ministry but they ignore him they like human connection but they leave him alone i will never forget years ago the spirit of god will keep me and said son never try to rush anything just walk with me just walk with me like he's telling someone now don't rush your life i know you think everybody has gone ahead of you don't rush that marriage don't rush that thing walk with him one day with him will cover 10 years of mistakes walk with him apostle i have no job just walk with him just walk with him if you were working five years ago all your salary put together would not be more than six million walk with him Gosh. the holy spirit fortunately from next week i'm starting a series the lord has allowed me to take a series we're taking a series on the holy spirit a complete i will share with you very deep things that i've not shared with many people the holy spirit you ignore him as a businessman because you believe you are intelligent i went to harvard you ignore him as a father because you think i'm not a small child Hi. will i ever be able to leave him i know you are looking at me is because i'm the i'm the part of the deal that is visible but behind me i'm not too smart to produce the results that you see i'm not ashamed of it oh. there is one who is mighty mighty there is an infinite wisdom behind everything you see if it is the lord's doing remember then it must be marvelous if it's a man's doing then it is natural scientific but the moment it becomes marvelous it is the lord's doing you are marvelous yeah. you are marvelous yeah. hey. you are marvelous yeah. you are marvelous value is defined by scarcity when you study developmental economics value is defined by what scarcity the ability of a thing to not be available everywhere the most scarce thing is whatever cannot be found on earth that's what he gives you as your reward anointing is not something you get just by fasting anointing is God's reward for trusting him for working with me I give you something that money cannot buy for walking with me I give you something that builds you out of shame and inferiority I know you came from a background where nobody knew you and you were foolish enough to walk with me then I give you an unction they may criticize you but you don't deny proofs brothers and sisters no sir I'm trusting that God will make someone's life marvelous. The key, listen, the key is not running around. The key is staying. Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. But one thing is needful. Oh God, I should have had five children now. Don't you know he can give you one child that is like a nation? Oh God, I've been crying about that job. 
when we talk about intimacy with God many busy people think it's a waste of time no 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 look I teach us some no no if I followed that route I would have been a failure today a big failure not ashamed you are the power in me you are the fire at work in me you are my ever present helper holy spirit I... how do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth just like that how do you look at someone who is dead and bring the person back to life there are people here now with situations that doctors have ridden you off even a charm cannot solve it you need a commodity that is not available in the earth I told you the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference in a few minutes from now 10 years problems will just leave just like that no 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 that's what happens when you value him that's what happens that's what happens listen when you honor a man of god you don't just honor a body you honor the sacrifice the sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to hold certain dimensions of possibility listen to me all men are not equal no sir it's, it's a very harsh statement but it's the truth we are equal in Christ but our sacrifices and the election of grace has separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man the Holy Spirit we are going to begin to pray but I, 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 I just four things the Holy Spirit you don't know him you are in trouble you will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve you didn't study everything you had a degree in an area having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom no sir that information is too small to define the quality of your life ministry you need him you want to succeed in life you don't just need information you need a person hallelujah holy spirit it's grace and glory i trust that god will initiate people into that dimension of grace of intimacy with the holy spirit hallelujah yes the holy spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy seven people seven people seven people seven people Call your people, oh God. It's an initiation into a dimension of intimacy. The sister outside, for he will be real to you. Real to you by his spirit. This is not an issue of jamboree. It's not an issue of feeling anointed. It's walking with a person. It will make your life a wonder. A wonder. A wonder. He will make your life a wonder. He will not just give you anointing. He will walk with you. Walk with you. So you become an effulgence of that grace. Then you can say that which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have heard. Thank you, oh my Father, 
for giving me your son and leaving your spirit in your work in my life is done I thank you oh my father for giving me your son and leave your spirit your word on earth Please sit down if you can. The third thing that you must know is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Please, I want you to be very sensitive. We'll soon arise to pray. Sensitive. Ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady. Jumping out of a lake. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Forever faithful to what will always provide for me praise your mercy towards me praise your way allow the Holy Spirit flow something is happening now the Lord is showing me a map you know this happens and I'm seeing Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit you're from that place an unction an unction I see a map in the spirit Southern Kaduna. Let the hand of God step into that dimension. It's not a miracle. It's a sign and wonder. It's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit. Everyone from Southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace. Southern Kaduna. Lift them, oh God. I hear my spirit lifting. 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 He's raising you. Raising you by his spirit. Raising you. There is an unction that makes this possible. Raising you by his spirit. I hope I'll be able to finish this. The mysteries of the kingdom. That's the third thing that you must seek to know. Not just the word of God not just Rema the mysteries there is a lady in overflow three one is here two is the one by the road three is the one by the empty land there is a lady overflow three the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her please I want I want her to come overflow three I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building right down there Please sit down. Let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk. There are so many people. You must access the mysteries of the kingdom. Everybody say mysteries. A mystery is a secret code of operation. The kingdom of God operates based on systems. 
and you see these mysteries contain in them the revelations of God the revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power the first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles the second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship two dimensions of God's power so you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension the moment a principle is consistent with the character of God it will release a dimension of the power of God like tithing like sowing and reaping like being responsible like mentorship all of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by God's own character you must access the principles of the kingdom therein lies the key to your dominion it is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do you must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire Can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration? You know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. But what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility? Because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back. But do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible? Are we together? Do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy? Yes, you know that divine healing is a possibility. But what controls it? Laying on of hands? No. No. Laying on of hands is just a channel. The inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that. Are we together now? You have to understand the power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have will respond to a man's need the same way if i stand with you and i have say tuberculosis you're a doctor doctor if i have tuberculosis and you stand near me must i believe in you to receive it no listen to me carefully are we together now i'm standing close to you it vetoes whether i agree with you i can even be insulting you but that's none of the business of the tuberculosis once there is proximity it will enter you you will live angry but you must receive it so if i can transfer sickness why can i not transfer health are you seeing that now that means i can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you life being the light of men you see that that's the concept of whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever, whatsoever is born of God can overcome. Not by jacking yourself. An understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit. Where you can walk in it. So you can come with a challenge, you can come with a sickness. Like some of you are here now trusting God. All kinds of impossible situations. They've told you it cannot be solved. They are right. Based on their understanding. This is a doctor. They are not wrong. Based on their understanding. But God's, God's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities. You see. He says with God. With God. Watch this. I've taught you. Alone it is impossible. But with God. With God. Alone I cannot call but with my phone with in partnership with God all things all things all things are possible I want you to look at the situation we came here with for the last time tonight because in the name of the Lord God of heaven it will go hmm. my assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe 
not the power that governs Nigeria not the power that governs UN the power that created the heavens and the earth for he upholds all things by the word of his power number three that's it there mysteries so number one you must know God number two that's redemption and everything that concerns God in the person of Jesus number two you must understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit the third thing you must have access to the word you must crave for accurate understanding number four this is a mystery I believe that has been known by very few and I truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that God has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body the fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of the body of Christ this strategy called the body of Christ the body of Christ is not just people the body of Christ many people say the body of Christ is not just a church there are people the body of Christ is not people the body of Christ is a strategy the only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of God is called Ecclesia the body of Christ the body of Christ is not a people it's a strategy that's why he said I will build it I will build it he didn't say I will make it I will build it like a formula like a plan and I will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable the gates of hell will not prevail against it there is a formation that the body of Christ is built it is so formidable the gate of hell can only touch members not the body the body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of God first Corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is here for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of God he said for this cause many are weak limited for this cause many are sickly and for this cause many sleep when was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body that's what killed him please pay attention get my teachings discerning the body that whole series you have to listen if you are in ministry here or you are a church leader a deacon you have to listen to it if not you will never rise a body has thou prepared for me it was prepared to be used a formidable strategy that beats hell hands down it's called the body of Christ everything is available in the body listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of God it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes son of man can these bones live and Ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula Christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after Christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only God they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message I'm just doing a quick recap because I'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully I told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with God that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation 
there is a way and manner God wants to be known and the way he advances that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with God your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when God wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of God without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is Abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now Elijah represents God's system of purifying and preparing men for revival Elijah is not a man Elijah is a system I've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was seen in Noah Elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the Lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people Elijah must come that's why Elijah is still alive God's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of God is called Elijah is a system the man Elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the Antichrist is a system not just a person you see that Peter a system that represents faith systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the Holy Spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with Benny Hinn. you see that Benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body Kenneth Copeland today represents God's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray God will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system I have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body discerning the body is different from destiny helpers destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that God anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the Lord if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now? I can't criticize Papa Ia Deboy and Bishop Oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes. It is impossible. Carry posters everywhere. It will not happen. There is a system. This is not publicity. It's a spiritual reality. So in honor of what they represent, I am authorized to access that reality. That's why you are here tonight. Let me tell you something. Listen carefully. You see this thing you call koinonia? Koinonia is not a ministry. Koinonia is a system. You have to believe this. 
it's a system it's not a movement it's not a fellowship it's not a group it's a system it's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of God I, I want you to be very hopeful so that when you come you don't have to be afraid there is something about the atmosphere so no matter how far you are you have come to Mount Zion certain things happen this is not just some human bragging a man of God trying to shine his ministry no tonight you are standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in God please listen to me you are standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change your ministry your business your family is standing face to face with a challenge and what you are about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness the invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness it will happen at the speed of light converting your prayer request to a testimony it's not trying to believe a reality here and now hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him make an altar call quickly right now everyone stand there are people here overflow one two three following us online in this place right now the Bible says this life is in his son you don't hear about the son and receive life you meet the son there are people standing here men and women scattered around you are a pastor leader deacon gentleman lady old young rich poor 
regardless of your status Jesus said ye must be born again there are people here who have not met Jesus we have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place you are here inside and outside you have heard what I said and whilst I was speaking the Spirit of God the one we so honor was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God and then you've been here and for some reason you've been one leg in and one leg out loved God was on fire but different things happen somewhere around your life and you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering man of God can I join them most welcome I want to count one to five and um, now this is how we we'll do it I want you to come the first sets of people can come out when they come and here is full then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows just close to your projector but I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain right now one quickly quickly run to Jesus from the depth of your heart you can keep standing you don't have to lie down or kneel down God bless you you don't have to kneel down madam you can stand quickly two don't think about it run to Jesus and this life is in his son and this life is in his son and this life is in his son man of God I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not join them quickly join them quickly I remember coming out for altar call one day but right now I'm not sure no if you are not sure you have to come out when a woman is pregnant she knows you are not sure join them something is wrong with what happened to you three are you coming apostle I'm trying to come out but my neighbor is stopping me we rebuke that spirit trying to stop you come out come to Jesus Jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men I will be ashamed of you before my father let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you I think we have enough people inside now every other person that comes just direct them to their various overflows outside those coming from outside you can wait there now in every moment I'm away Lord have your way Lord have your way with me hallelujah madam look at me you you love Jesus Christ come I'm seeing you you are not working well what's wrong with you what's wrong with her who brought her because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain come what's wrong with you from where are you program so she now told me that I should come and attend the program so For I have diabetes and ulcer and my back pain here from the back here down to my leg everything yes I'm feeling the pain very well that is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here so that is why I came here mommy look at me every one of them you heard what I said everyone will leave you here and you'll go back to Abuja Amen. Amen. you believe that yes ma of course if it doesn't work your sister will not ask you to come hallelujah I'm going to lead you people to pray join them to pray we're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and all that devil will go the ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing the ultimate cure is Jesus a man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says thy sins be forgiven and people say ah what is this and Jesus said which is easier hi that means to be healed is easier than to be saved so it's not as easy it's not just recitation are we together mama I'll pray for you go back and join them those of you standing here the overflow lift your right hand and sincerely you are not reciting a poem from the depth of your heart I want you to say this after me say Lord Jesus no, some of you are crying but don't worry Jesus sees your tears say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you 
I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. You shed your blood for me. You rose again for me. And tonight, I receive your life. I receive your grace. I receive your spirit. I declare that I'm born again. I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus. Victory is given to me over sin, over the flesh, and over the world in Jesus' name. Please keep your hands lifted. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The power of sin, the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now. I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today. The Lord transforms your life by His Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to do something for me very quickly. Please cooperate with all the people, um, whether outside any of the overflows. There is a gentleman waving his hand, some um, of the uh, ushers there. I want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly. This is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you. So do that very, very quickly. Very quickly. Madam, I will pray for you. You go and write your name and come back. While we are waiting for them, please make sure we are going to be very fast. You see that our time is gone. So it's going to be a very quick walk. Very quick walk. We are going straight to the business of the night. And I want you to believe it doesn't take time. It only takes God. It doesn't take time. It only takes God. Very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. We are going to trust the Lord to... Please, ushers, coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of jesus please be serious in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that every spirit every force every influence standing against god's word over my life i declare that you are under judgment tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Shala braskada baladia. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there. And until those influences are taken out of your life, victory is far from your reach. Are we together? Number two, I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with. Say, Lord, visit it one by one until there is total victory. Don't let the challenge, don't let the challenge limit you. Take your eyes away from it and pray. Are you praying inside and outside? Thank you, Jesus. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can, no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will. Come 
more time. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. Such a strong anointing in this place tonight. Lift your hands and just be silent. Please. I'm seeing two numbers, five and one. And the Lord is saying there are 51 people here. 51 people. He's bringing massive deliverance to their families. I want you to bring them out. 51 people. Don't shout. Don't do nothing. Just keep your hands. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God, that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows. Right now, I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve. Right now, I release the ministry of angels. Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. The fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of his presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Shalapakuratai. Legretoskopi shalapariatako. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. Shigalaparakoto soto balada. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty in God. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Sekete Nakata, keep your hands lifted. Malekete Prekete Nakaya. Ay, 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 Mighty on the road. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. Help that lady, please. You are mighty on the road. Break forth down fountains of the deep. And with Kadosh, you are mighty on the road. Keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing snakes. That's what I'm seeing. Just flying up. Snakes. I'm seeing many ladies being delivered from this influence. Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name of Jesus. I put the word of God upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus, I release upon it the power to perform. Shakatakata. Those influences in the name of Jesus, I release judgment, 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 judgment upon every strange influence limiting the life of God's people. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep and weep and weep at all. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. You Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. Jesus, I'm seeing gates, gates with chains. One shout is what will bring that gate down. Are you ready? Just a shout of the name of Jesus. One, two, three. I open those gates. Kato Sobarata. Legete Kete. Sobes Kotai. Embre Kete Kete Leka. Gates be open. Gates of limitations. Gates of stagnation be open. By the unction of the spirit, gates be open. 
The gate must open. Tonight is a miracle service. I prophesied the two lift gate be open. The two lift gate. Many of you don't know what is happening in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, I see gates, gates of destinies, gates of possibilities that are being held by witchcraft, gates over families. No progress, no results. I come tonight with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Listen. Listen to me. A gate is what gives a man access. Access into a place. Access out of a place. The Bible says to open the doors of prison. There are men who are moving. But they are under prison. There's nothing. Hear me. You may be here listening to me. There's nothing you do that works. No matter how you try. Seek advice. It will not work. No matter what you do. You are not bad. You are not lazy. But there is a spirit. But right now lift your hands. In the name of Jesus. One more time. I come against the spirit. That stand as gatekeepers. Over the victory of people. Over the life of people. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name. The name that is a key that opens the gate. One, two, three. I open it. I open it. I open it. Online, outside. I command it to open. I command it to open. Locked by ancestry, locked by divination, locked by necromancy and projection, manipulation of the constellations. I command in the name of He that holds the key of David, I command that door be open, that no power can shut. Be sensitive tonight. The spirit of God is moving. One of the ushers. One of the ushers. You are an usher. But the unction of the spirit. Help her. Visiting your family. Visiting your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a lady quickly. There's no time to speak. Our time is gone. We have to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing a lady. You have two sisters. Two of them are barren. They are married. No children. Please, where are you? It's part of your prayer request. You are wearing a black dress. You are the one. Come. Come. There's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come. You are a great lady. But there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady. Again, the Lord is opening my eyes. I don't know why this happens. I'm seeing a map. Benway. Benway. Benway people get ready. Benway. 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 I see Benway. And the Lord says, stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway. I stretch my hands right now. The anointing of the Spirit visiting people. Benway. 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 By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Hear me? And I'm hearing in my spirit, break the covenant of motherhood. I don't know what this means. But this is something that has to do with a covenant involving women. I arrest it right now. In the name of Jesus, I see fire dropping right now. People from Benway, you are from Benway, you come under this influence. Please help that person. Benway, Benway, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God, traveling to Benway, breaking covenant. I speak to the
the soil of that land release the destinies tied with you listen what I'm seeing is not good the Lord is taking me to a vision and I'm standing and I'm seeing black ropes around trees this is Otuko black ropes tied around trees and the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands at the count of three may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded I command it right now upon every shrine every activity of darkness in the name of Jesus let it come upon you now let it come upon you now let it come upon you now hallelujah the supernatural I've taught you operates only in partnership with five elements listen without one or more of these elements the supernatural cannot find expression I am seeing a wild this is a serpent I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again I'm seeing a serpent I stretch my hands the Bible says for the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not now listen carefully five elements of the supernatural number one is light the supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light number two the air sound the supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound number three the earth the earth is a universal point of contact every living thing makes contact with it number three are we together number four water the mystery that bears witness water is not an entity water is history water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit contained within it are more mysteries than we understand number five fire a mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything purifies and destroys can make and kill the only personality with the quality of fire is god can make a life and destroy it would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing purify gold and destroy the impurities I want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural because everyone is standing on the ground I want to pray for you the Lord is asking me to break delay please just follow me we are coming to the sick people but just follow me tonight let's walk circumspectly I'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down they cannot move you are here no matter what you do there is no progress this is the story of your family look at me the Lord wants to visit you first even before your family your two sisters they are married no child are you married you are not married we have to pray I don't know if you believe what I'm telling you but God is raising you to be a savior in your family believe this thing no you may not look like it but it is the spirit of Deborah but first and foremost you must be delivered first God is not finished with her I command that devil go there is no hiding in his presence in the name of Jesus Christ hold my hands my dear in the name of Jesus the Lord God whom I serve I command the reign of witchcraft as I hold you right now over your sisters over your life and over your family I command them to be broken right now I release upon you grace for restoration in the name of Jesus and I pray for you that grace of Deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men I release that grace upon you I want you to go and tell your sisters the Lord brings a visitation to them even as he did to Hannah at Shiloh the Lord comes for them with strange visitations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now all those under the anointing I command the spirits any spirit that has been located by God must leave the victims therefore in the name of Jesus and at the count of three you know my voice I represent his majesty at the count of three 
you must let them go now and forever one two three be gone go out of their lives destinies now and forever out of their lives out of their destinies I prophesy recovery I prophesy recovery I prophesy recovery for when a thief is caught he's made to pay back tenfold I command recovery in the name of Jesus let them go there is no hiding for his light shines upon you in the name of Jesus Christ listen if there is any project you are involved in lift your hand any project business project building project please just lift your hands before I pray we pray the prayer that will release speed projects ah. I'm standing and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking across this place and I'm standing here and he's saying I should stretch my hands here there is a visitation that is coming for the people here therefore I stretch my hands Lord your will be done I don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them right now in the name of Jesus I release that unction and that grace everyone within this vicinity let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles help them in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now everyone is standing I want to pray for you please listen there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life it's not a doctrine it's an experience where a man can make progress spiritually financially business wise if you are in a position for a long time it's a sign that something is wrong are we together it says ye have come past this mountain long enough then it tells you the formula the door is in the north it said turn northwards turn northwards you have come past this mountain long enough I want you to stand on the ground I see physical fire rising and sweeping consuming people's feet some of you as this is happening you will hear the sounds of physical chains literally physical chains this will happen I want us to shout the name of Jesus three times that's what the Holy Ghost is telling me I will lead you and you will shout it the third time the chains of delay and stagnation will will break open many of you physically physically you feel it happening thank you Jesus let the word of God come upon this prophecy are you ready now number one are you ready number two now I want you to get ready that grace that came upon Elijah and caused him to run overtaking the chariots of Ahaz speed and advancement is coming on people right now are you ready shout Jesus receive it now receive it now let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement I command you to advance I command you to move forward I break limitations I break limitations I command advancement outside advancement the overflows advancement may that anointing hit you advancement 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 in the name of Jesus the son of the living God no power can stop you God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than many, our God is healer, our 
your hands towards me. Don't lift it up. Stretch it towards me. There is there is going to be an activation of strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. Strange gifts. The time for impartation will come. But fire is living. And it's coming upon people and the Lord said, let them stretch their hands. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands back to you. In the name of Jesus. Gifts, gifts, gifts. Don't man gifts. Don't man gifts. Where is it? I call it forth now. Don't man gifts. Don't man gifts. You may not know it's there. I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit. I'm talking of potentials. Gifts, gifts. I stir it up right now. Like a well, I command it. Like the axe head, I command it to float right now. I command it to float right now. Gifts that will bring you honor. Gifts. So toko toko tope reke teke te. Gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gifts. There is a lady. I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit. You are dressed in something that looks like orange, like the house are dressing from your head to who is that? Who is that? Come from this row. Jesus praise. What's your name? Veronica. From where? I came from Abuja. You came from Abuja. As I stood here, I was hearing your prayer, and you were saying, Lord, let this man of God locate me. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that two things now. Number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life. That's the first thing that is happening to you. Captivity and reproach. Captivity and reproach. Inside, inside the main auditorium, from where people sit in front, count nine lines, nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now. Inside. Inside. It's a strange miracle coming for that person. The ninth row. Supernatural manifestation of the power of God. My sister, what do you want the Lord to do in your life? Uh -uh. You are just generalizing. Huh? I'm looking at you oh, and then I'm seeing your heart and I'm seeing should I say it? Do you believe you can? Are you married? Huh? Where's your husband? Did you come with him? What do you want the Lord to do for him? See, this man is your real prayer. That's, that's you want the Lord to honor him. And what, what is he doing now? I'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place. That has been your desire. Go and tell him that a man of God has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um place i'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so i can leave this place we have to pray for the sick i'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace this is not this is is it maimuna is it maimuna or something i'm hearing a name maimuna 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 I wish we had time today but we have to pray for the sick i want us to leave this very fast because i'm going to counsel well just leave her i found the person but but you come my dear i want to pray who is this 
No, 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 no. It's not just any grace. I pray for you. My dear, lift your hands. God wants to visit your family. There are four people here. A very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now. No, 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 no. Four of you right now. A strong power is hitting you right now. Just in this, this place outside. I don't know what it is about this place. Maybe the miracle services will start coming here now. There is there's real faith in this place. My dear, I end it now. I end it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands on her stomach. I end it now. I command that reproach taken from your life in the name of Jesus. Don't come out for social reasons, but I'm seeing a lady here. You have suffered a very terrible infection. This is a, a woman issue, a terrible infection. This thing, you have treated it and done everything you know to do, but it has refused to go. This is witchcraft. It's not just a normal infection. You have spent your money. But right now, the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that it comes to an end. Complete end. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Complete end. I stretch my hands. Four people. Right now here in this row. Lord, where are they? One is a lady. Three are gentlemen. Step into that dimension. That's right. Help them. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. There is a mother here. God wants to wipe her tears. Madam, who is a gala here? Hold on. You are a gala. From where? From where? Oko. What is that? Is there a place like that in the gala land? Huh? In Kogi State. So that you don't come and tell us lies. If, if you are not from there, just wait. There is your turn to come from lift your hands I'm seeing an attack on your life and your family and the Lord is you free madam where is your child did you come with your child There's no time to waste, please. I'll just pray for you so that we can go. In the name of witchcraft, now. And on you right now. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Say it, in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing into my life strange testimonies lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice those outside are you praying lift your voice and begin to pray Kai, one of the things listen hold on i'm seeing now i want you to believe it i just looked up and i started hearing the cry of as if babies just fill the room listen carefully I just lifted i wanted to move and i just lifted my eyes and the lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children if you are standing in for barrenness whether you are in any overflow please come in i want to minister to you by myself barrenness only barrenness please husband and wife if you are standing for barrenness except you are standing in for someone if you are standing alone you must be married praise god you are standing alone you must be married in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit please stand you can go you can go Pastor Alpha now we are going to pray and while they are doing that let's buy time ushers move around all the overflows make sure you collect the request of everybody I notice overflow three there are few people attending to them there so let's have people. You see why we need more ushers and we need more people. Say after me, Father. Father. Everyone shout it, Father. Father. We, receive we receive your visitation. In the name of Jesus. We receive miracles, signs, and wonders. Now please accept they ask you. You don't have to tell them what is wrong. Don't worry. The hand of God is here to bless you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ father we give you all the praise those online I want you to connect by faith and trust the power of God to touch you we have very few minutes to do this and in the name of Jesus will be done no matter what the issue is as we touch you start checking yourself you can register your testimony we'll take it on Friday whether you are standing in for someone don't worry the power of God is there to touch you in the name of Jesus father we give you all the praise do you know why I came here because I saw that this woman your issue is not just healing hold on I saw the, her holding pictures and a passport and then I'm looking at it and I saw a plane is it something like you were staying outside the country is that true yes sir. because I'm seeing a woman a plane bringing you is that true uh -uh. and the Lord is opening my eyes I'm seeing another vision I'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man like your husband and that man drove you yes sir he drove yes sir from where from abroad where is abroad Qatar from where where is he this is you yes. ah. one week. oh my god this is a baby look at me why did he drive you away you see why prophecy is powerful look at this woman come madam I looked at these things and the Lord told me that this woman needs help. I know I'm taking time, but let's attend. Madam, don't cry. It's okay. Where were you before? We, no other man. We are together in our blood. We are together. Are, were you married? Yes, sir. You are from where? Benway State, sir. You are from Benway? Yes, sir. You see, I told you what God was saying about Benway. You, you married him and went abroad? Yes, sir. Then what happened? He said as you come back, my paper is having issue. Not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community. So he lady, married another woman? Yeah, from my same community, sir. He's staying abroad with her? Yes, sir. He drove you away with the baby? Yes, sir. No, he, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week. <laughs> Did he know you were pregnant? No, sir. Immediately I took it. He now said I should come see, back. Man, listen. This, this is what we, we keep saying again and again. Please listen to me. Now, I don't mean no disrespect. But you see why ladies will tell you people to marry people who are born again. Not just people who have money. Huh? Don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe, one bag. And just carry you around like that. It must be godly. Look at what this man did for this woman. One week and left her with this innocent child. So where are you staying now? I'm staying out in Abuja. So my it's sister. from Abuja you came? Yes, sir. What do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman? Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife? Yes, And she knew. still came and married? Yes, my dad is also here, sir. Where's your dad? Daddy, please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now send stroke to him, sir. <laughs> He's from, okay, Benway too. Yes, sir. <sighs> Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a first, uh, I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a Benin state. You are suffering. Hi. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this? This, brothers and sisters, believe it or not, is what witchcraft looks like. Are you seeing this? Whether you are in Qatar or wherever, if that spirit is not destroyed, this is what it will do. Because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman. But she didn't look... If you see this woman, does she look like somebody who has gone abroad? I'm not insulting you. You can see that this woman was not even treated well. Suffered with the man. Now he went abroad and sent her back. When this baby now, if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby, when this baby becomes responsible... The man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back. Then they will now accuse men of God and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid. 
you are using the baby to make to get power you see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of god you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together Holy share, help me. You're the God of us. Awesome he stood up your power. The Lord is opening my eyes. The same spirit that made that man drive you is making him fight with this woman now. They are not even... No, 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 no. I'm not seeing peace. Huh? I'm not seeing peace. I'm seeing a situation where this man is coming and checking the woman's phone. And then I'm seeing another man's text. And the man is giving her a dirty slap. Slap on her face. The Bible says what God has joined. What's his name? Simon, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, I call you back to your wife. In the name of Jesus, may you encounter a man of God and an anointing that will save you and deliver you there. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this baby will not be a bastard. Baby, I speak to you. Every foundational thing programmed in your spirit as a baby, we cancel it right now. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare the favor that was on Esther that made Hadassah look at her once and had to call her to be his queen. May that favor come upon you. Listen, don't go to any native doctor. You hear me? Because I'm seeing one mama coming to you in Abuja and she's telling you that there's somebody. She told you he's a man of God. He's a native doctor. Don't go anywhere. Huh? And number two, anybody that says you should bring one naira. What did I say? One naira for prayer. Just thank him and walk away. If, if this poor woman, you still collect money from her for prayer, then you must be a very wicked person, isn't it? In the name of Jesus, he will return with testimony. My brother, come. Are you working? What do you want God to do in your life? I'm, I'm a pastor. So when I, I mean, God called me into ministry. So in the field, the back to the, I mean, the came so tough, the, the attack and the uh, foundation, it became so strong. So I took up. I, I couldn't stay. But up, up to now, God is still calling me back to where I serve him. I've been serving him to. Where, where were you serving? In Kogi State. No. You need mentorship, you need covering, you need impartation. You don't just get up like that and go into ministry. God saved you, they would have killed you like a chicken. There are rules to this thing. Eh? It's not just because you touch somebody and he fell down, you get up and go to Kogi State. Do you know what pursued you back? Eh? It's the mercy of God, it's not witchcraft. They would, you would have died like a chicken. Please listen, I'm not scaring you. But there are systems. Don't get up out of zeal and just say, I am anointed. Be careful. As powerless as Satan is, is your understanding that this depowers him. If you don't have that understanding, you can be anointed and your life will be destroyed. Praise the Lord. My brother, hold my hands. I'm not just seeing you doing ministry. Truly, you need help. Eh? You need help. After service, come and see this man, Pastor Alpha. Eh? After service, come and see him. He will talk with you and guide you and train you and help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. A time of prophecy and activations. Some of you are here because you desire higher levels of unction. In your ministries, your lives, your businesses. The prophetic word of God is very powerful. When there is grace back in it. Because it does not only reveal it creates are we together in the next about two or three minutes i want your heart to genuinely and desperately be open be open in 
the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace walking in this gentleman. You are the first. I know you are doing protocol work, but you are the first to receive this grace. I see a grace of two of you. Supernatural grace of the Holy Ghost. Taking you to a new dimension in the spirit. Hallelujah. Benga, come. Grace for another dimension of fire. Lift your hands. Grace. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. You speak and there is power of performance. Power of performance. Power of performance. Power of performance. No word will be empty. You speak and there is grace and the power of performance. Hallelujah. Someone come and hold. Victor, come. Come and hold them. Somebody. Grace, supernatural influence, and wisdom, and victory in a strange dimension. A dimension you have never seen in your life in the name of Jesus. Supernatural grace. I open up that level of grace in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Where shall they? We're rounding up. They are doing their. Please, someone, hold her. I don't want. Hold the child. Speaking, we have just a minute or two. Hold her. Make sure that ladies, you come and hold her. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is quickening. The power of sight, the grace to see, grace to see, the grace to see. Make sure you are holding her well. The grace to see. Penny, you are taking back fresh fire, fresh fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, fresh fire. I'm not. It's not like I'm just speaking, people. This is this is just by the Spirit. Come. Lord is bringing glory on us. Fresh fire even upon your hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, you see, hold on. We're out of time, but Pastor, house on the rock, come. You have been desiring something for a long time. Come. God is giving it to you in this season. In the name of Jesus, may that fire, may that grace, take a drink of that wine. In the name of Jesus, fresh unction, fresh unction, capacity, open up your capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, there's a heavy spirit on that small girl. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just place it on hand. Leave, leave it there. In the name of Jesus, judgment upon that devil, this foul spirit. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but I want you to receive. Let me start with the men of God. You are in ministry here. It's time to take something heavy and something genuine. Let me pray. Jamfa, come. Ejimi, come. I'm seeing it. A new, a truly new grace and a new wine. New grace and a new wine. A supernatural dimension. Dimension. This grace will speak in unbelievable ways. Lord, bring him into that experience. In the name of Jesus. Truly bring him into that experience. 
I open up, I open up, I open up close fountains. I open up now. Close fountains. I open up now. Fire. Fresh grace for influence. Influence, influence, business influence. New grace, new dimensions of wealth. Influence. Commanding miracles. Strange miracles. Collect that child from hope. Collect that child from hope. In the name of Jesus. Fresh fire hope. I activate that dimension. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus. God is giving you eyes that see. Strange dreams. Revealing direction for people's lives. In the name of Jesus. Where is Aaron? Aaron. Where is Aaron? In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord says I should tell you. Seasons of reward are before you. Seasons of great and strange reward. Father let it be. By the power of your spirit. By the power of your spirit. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, something is coming strong. Go. The unction. For new levels in ministry. At the count of three. If you are here in ministry. There is a call of God upon your life. One. Two. That fire comes now. Take that fire now. Take that fire. A new level of ministry. A new level of power. A new level of grace. Never to be barren. Never to be barren. Never to be barren. Never to be barren. Where is Yerima, head of department media? Please come quickly. Quickly, I'm praying. Where is he? Oh, that's him there. In the name of Jesus. The Lord says he's bringing you honor, untold honor, untold honor by the spirit of the living God, untold honor, untold honor, untold honor. Now I decree and declare, Jordan, where's Jordan? Jordan bookstore, I hear restoration, where are you? Restoration, fire, that restoration, fire, in the name of Jesus, everything the canker worm. The palmer worm has stolen. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Now I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God comes upon you. And you begin to run like Elijah. I prophesy speed. Receive it now. Receive it now. Speed, speed, speed. Speed. By the unction of the Spirit. Speed. By the unction of the Spirit. Speed in the name of Jesus. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed are you for you come in the name of our God. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw the tears in Nigeria in the month of September. It was almost unbearable. I'm not, just listen to me, I've not finished preaching. I'm not a prophet of doom. But I saw it was bad. Economically, and otherwise it was it was like this country was completely clueless and at a point of a mess i saw people being um what do they call it laid off from work completely laid off husbands wives laid off their services were no longer needed in different sectors including government sectors they downsized people because they needed to accommodate what was happening are we together? I saw an increase in crime rate, theft, stealing, including stealing people, not just stealing things, stealing people. Why is God revealing this to scare you? No, God is revealing this to strengthen you. 
he will never bring a prophecy without a strategy just keep following there is always an exemption for the church but the problem most times is we don't pay attention there are people who hear what i'm saying now i'm, I'm sorry especially for elderly people they just shut down say all these idiots talking again and then until it happens and then we become victims of situations and circumstances you see let me tell you something prophecy prophecy in its purest form was designed not just to give people to make people privy to something that will happen the most important part of prophecy is the strategy for exemption not what will happen the strategy for exemption any true prophet that brings a word from the lord especially if it's a word that is on the negative side if it came from god god must be able to speak to his people and say this is a strategy you can choose it especially for certain things that are written judgments you cannot pray them away but there is a system like the flood of noah there was a system that was built called the ark like the passing of the angel of death upon egypt the mystery of the blood of the lamb and the passover right it was the mystery of exemption but you see the church we we have this ugly mentality which came from a misguided understanding of what the new testament teaches i can relate with god i don't need to hear anybody leave me alone if he's so god will speak to me if god has not spoken to me i will not listen let me tell you something listen i was teaching the school of ministry students our spiritual growth is based on our personal relationship with the lord jesus christ but the advancement of the kingdom is based on covenants you have to understand this your spiritual growth and my spiritual growth is based on my personal encounter my knowledge of who god is his ways and that's how i grow in the old testament it used to be through prophets and mediums but now the bible tells us that jesus has come as a mediator he's opened a new and living way to all of us we can now access god directly in terms of spiritual growth but the advancement of god's kingdom is not general god finds men and enters a covenant with those men to represent his dealings in a particular dimension and every time god wants to deal with the territory in that dimension it must come through those channels they are called spiritual tribes they represent the communication of god's purposes in a dimension so when you talk about faith every time god wants to bring his speakings as regards the word of faith there are spiritual channels he has entered a personal covenant with and aligned them to be able to communicate his purposes in that respect bishop oyedeko kenneth copeland you can trace that spiritual tribe and they represent his communications in that regard are we together there are other dimensions when the spirit of revival wants to fall upon the nation there are people who represent the spiritual tribe that communicates that reality to the world it's not general so your tapping into that possibility only becomes on the strength of your alignment with what god is doing when god wants to come in in the area of finances and prosperity i know that everyone will be blessed but there are people who have a personal covenant with god that represent his speakings in that regard you will never ignore their ministry and hear the current dealings of the spirit as far as that is concerned so the advancement of the kingdom it's not based on personal relationship it's based on covenants god calls a man called abraham the first man in the bible who showed us that men can walk by faith with god are we together he is god's type of faith the only reason why we can tap into the possibilities of god as far as the blessing is concerned is on the strength of the covenant that god entered with one man called abraham are we together when god wanted to salvage a nation he used one man called moses entered a personal covenant with moses that afforded moses an unusual access to god beyond his personal spiritual growth because moses himself did not make the cut to the promised land how be it based on that covenant to an extent that although moses may have failed spiritually 
in the book of Jude, an angel came to carry his body and Satan still wanted the dead body because they represent systems. They are not just human beings. They are systems. Elijah was a man who represented God's system. God's covenant of reformation. God's covenant of, of um, forerunning revivals. He's called Elijah the Tishbite. Are we together? So, by the time you allow people to begin to corrupt your mind and say, don't make it look like only some people can hear God. No, the idea is not a show of superiority. The idea is an election by grace where men have become like trees. They are like spiritual vines and your connection to them is how you are able to tap into certain possibilities. I've shared it with us here. Abraham gave birth to Ishmael with Hagar. Is that true? Hagar was crying. Ishmael was crying. But the Bible says God had the voice of the young lad. Not the voice of Hagar. Why? Because when God looked at Ishmael, he saw Abraham and received and saw the covenant. God, more often times to say, he blessed Solomon for the sake of his father, David. Are we together when the kingdom was about to be advanced after Christ came he got 12 men entered a personal covenant with them listen let me tell you there is a difference between those apostles and us we are equal in Christ but they were men who entered a certain kind of covenant with God that represented the advancement of God's kingdom if Satan killed all those 12 apostles the kingdom could not be advanced because it was through them that it would be spread. That's why God protected them. Angels had to come and open prisons to force them to go out. Are we together? One man called John, the beloved, had a personal understanding. It was his personal covenant with God that granted him access to show us the revelation, the apocalypse, the unfolding of prophecy. There are still men like that on the earth. There are not many, but there are. In fact, the system of God's electing these men is always in twelves. There's no time to teach you on that. That God's apostolic governing system is always in twelves. So in, in regions, you will always find this number, twelve. The apostolic spiritual governing council of God. They may not even know themselves. But they represent God's order of activities. Are we together? But you see, when the devil wants to deceive you, he will bring pride and make you look like I can access the throne of God by myself. I, am, I don't need to hear anything. Even when God is giving a word of caution, most times we don't listen and we say, no, 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 no. I'm, nobody should do this and that and that. And then, you know, um, I don't even want to go into that, that teaching because it will take our whole time. As you know, I love the body of Christ. I am the last person who will fight the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ and I love the different dimensions of spiritual operation. But then I am always quick to attack imbalances especially when they get to a level where they can corrupt the authenticity of the work of believers the moment an imbalance gets so bad that it can bring you out of spiritual alignment it calls for concern are we together and one of it is of course as we know the concept of grace are we together now now when you understand the concept of grace and you isolate it with respect to other things that God is doing it becomes an error grace as a doctrine on its own is an error it only makes sense when you add it together and you piece it together with every other thing God is doing when you study the book of Ephesians the book of Ephesians theologically speaking contains the highest church truth are we together where Apostle Paul was teaching the church he was giving them certain doctrines the entire scope 
of a Christian experience. Six chapters which were a communication of the entire activities of the believer. So it starts theologically speaking with what we call sitting. Right? You've, heard, you've read that and many of you have heard it in different messages. It was that revelation came by a man called Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee was the, the, the apostle that God used to communicate the realities of redemption in a very balanced and authentic way to the body of Christ and so that position of sitting the Bible starts in the book of Ephesians teaching us how in fact when it starts in chapter 1 it never talks about us it talks about Christ and all that he has done when you start reading chapter 2 it now brings us into the scene right we are now raised up with Christ so the revelation of God's grace is seen in chapter 1 and 2 and it is true that the foundation of a believer's life is predicated upon the grace of God. There are certain things that we can never have ourselves, like righteousness. It is impossible for anybody to have righteousness by himself. The Bible says the best of our righteousness is as filthy rags. And do not confuse righteousness and uprightness. They are not the same. Righteousness and uprightness are not the same. Righteousness is a gift from God. Uprightness is our response, the advantage, our, our work of faith. I'm just giving us, are you getting blessed? I just want to establish a few things before we continue. It's very, very important. So the Bible starts teaching us on the grace of God and all the possibilities that come with that grace. All that Christ had done for us in his death, his burial, his resurrection and his ascension into heaven. In fact, it was on the strength of that that Paul began to teach in chapter, in verse 17. He said, for this cause, I have a passion for you understanding this. This is the foundation of your victory in Christ. And for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you, right? The spirit of revelation, you know, and understanding that your eyes being enlightened or flooded with light, that you may know certain things. One is the hope of your calling. And then, you know, the power that raised Christ that was exalted when Christ was raised from the dead, you know, and, and all of that. And Paul begins to speak. He knew that the church needs to know that. But Paul did not just walk there. He didn't stop there. He began to talk about what is called theologically our walk of faith. Right? Character. Now you taking advantage of the grace of God. I told you there are two dimensions to the grace of God. There is the grace of God as unmerited access and there is the grace of God as power to live like Christ. They are all called grace. Don't just confuse them. Grace does not just mean what God has done and we receive by faith. There is a dimension of grace that represents everything Christ has done that we could not do. And he gave it to us. We receive it by faith. But there is a dimension of grace that empowers us to do we will do, but it's not by our strength. Are we together? And then he wraps up the book of Ephesians with what is called the, the you know, uh, standing and then our, our, our walk and then, you know, sitting and standing. Then he talks of spiritual warfare. Our ability to contend against powers and principalities. And listen, every doctrine that must build a believer, please hear me, every doctrine that must build a believer must sustain all these components whenever there is a deviation from this pattern it will lead to error if you try to teach people how to do warfare how to do character and you forget the grace of god you will lead them into error and legalism are we together when you try to bring isolate the doctrine of holiness without giving men the foundation of faith you will lead to self-righteousness which does not hold any weight in the spirit and so it must be in that order. The first thing believers must understand about God is not warfare, it's the grace of God. And that's encapsulated in what we call the gospel of salvation. A revelation of the substitutionary work of uh, uh, Jesus Christ, which is a reflection of the love of the Father. So when we see that grace, then our walking right now by faith is our own participation that's called the gospel of the kingdom our reward in gratitude and honor for that sacrifice for us and then our standing it says having done all to stand stand
Now, let me tell you something. The part of this truth you ignore is the path the devil will use to destroy your life. You can't choose sitting as it were. Grace. You can't choose kingdom just like that and isolate it. You can't choose deliverance just like that. There's a series on it and you can get it after the service. It's called the full gospel. Where all these doctrines were examined one by one. There are imperfections, there are imbalances. To the end that the bride of Christ will become perfect. He said, come and I will show you the lamb's wife. He said, and he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in height. And part of the possibilities in the kingdom is the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. God stations these men so that they can communicate the speakings of the spirit and it is that same order of god's system that was mimicked by the antichrist system when you read the book of revelations from uh, uh, chapter 13 and the rest the bible tells us that satan empowered the beast the beast will now empower the false prophets the same order the same way god empowers his apostles and prophets to communicate certain things satan empowers the beast who empowers the false prophets and then they continue carrying out their agenda so there is a system spiritual growth is not haphazard you don't choose how you want it's not even just how your pastor said so there is an irrefutable pattern that has not changed it did not change just because um god jesus christ came and died for us no it's an eternal pattern it was carved out of who God is, not what he is doing. Are we together? There are people who believe in miracles, but they do not believe in the prophetic and the apostolic. That lapse is Satan's authorization in their life. There are people who do not believe in the gift of the spirit, but they are well-meaning people. That lapse is satan's you know advantage in their life there are people for instance who believe in grace but they may not believe in holiness and righteousness and all of that and satan takes advantage of it there are people who believe in deliverance but may not believe in the grace of god and satan takes advantage and they are forever fighting every and anything the key is not exemption the key is balance everybody say balance say it again balance the key is balance because all of these things are components of the same system. Hallelujah. And so I want you to believe the prophetic is real. It is still functional. It did not die with the New Testament. The prophetic is real. Now I know that here and there people may have exaggerated certain dimensions of it. But it's not enough reason for us to throw the baby and the bad water. Lives can be rescued when we understand what God is saying. And the Bible says, he that hears, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So if he's talking to one person, he's talking to the ecclesia, the church. Hallelujah. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, I hear what you are saying. I'm not rebellious. I hear what you are saying. You are speaking to the church. I am part of the church and I hear what you are saying. I hear what you are saying. I'm not a rebel. I hear what you are saying. I hear what you are saying. Go ahead and pray. strategies right now that God revealed to me and then we'll take some time and really pray 
I want us to seriously pray tonight and God will grant us that grace. Are we together? If you fight economic empowerment, get set to struggle spiritually. Promise made a statement when he came to receive the offering and he said, having abundance of supplies will increase your prayer life and minimize your prayer points. How true. You see, let me tell you something. This system that we live in, Cosmos, is a system that was designed intelligently. Are we together? God made the heavens and the earth, but the system, the social strata, and its civilization was nicely modeled and built by Lucifer, the custodian of the Antichrist system. And he built it such that our civilization will only thrive on economic empowerment. Please listen. Are we together now? And part of the imbalance that we're talking about is what has produced believers who are prayerful, loving, but we have not paid attention to our finances. And in this season, our flaw is becoming obvious. Are we together? Many anointed churches are seen right now that they cannot buy generator for their prayer meetings. Many churches that will have to depend on rent or something. The man, the landlord may be an unbeliever and he may get up under the influence of a strange spirit and say no more use of this venue. It is locked and what happens? The sheep is scattered. It's a strategy by the pit of hell because the Bible says the borrower is and will always be slave to the lender. So our concept of empowerment must be seen not just as a desire to be rich and to be money mongers. Please get this. If that is your thinking, you are already in error. The concept of empowerment is to rise to a level where we overcome the influence of mammon. That spirit that is, is compelling the nations to worship her. There is a spirit. It's called mammon. If you have not seen that spirit, just look around our government. And you will know that that spirit is being worshipped. The obsession for the worship of images and the worship of Lucifer did not start in our generation. Right? Remember when a king built 90 solid feet, go and said that the sound of music, everybody will bow down and worship. And your survival in that territory depended on your willingness to bow. Some gentlemen said, oh king, no. They found another system of exemption and they changed the tide. Businesses are bowing already. Churches are bowing already. Systems are coming to their knees. I've heard men of God who didn't used to talk about certain things. And I've been surprised hearing the way they are beginning to be so obsessed about financial principles that are not consistent with the ways of the Lord. And the reason is because for every leader... What faith is to the realm of the spirit, that's what finance is to this realm. You must pay the school fees of your child. Are we together? And that reality is beginning to punish a lot of people to the detriment of their spiritual life. But everybody said there is a way out. Shout, he said there is a way out. The way out of financial hardship in this season goes beyond investments, goes beyond business. Let me tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. You see, if you do investments, you need money to make money. Is that true? You need money to make money. If you do business, you are selling products, you are selling services and that's all right. But the problem is that the products you are selling have a fixed price and cannot be manipulated ordinarily. Are we together? Meaning there is a limit to what can come into your hand. There is a limit to patronage and all of that. But the key, I've said it again and again, is when you become the product yourself. Not just that you offer services, you become the service. When you become valuable, not just have things that are valuable, but you yourself as a person 
you rise to a point where you become an epitome of value you have entered your financial sabbath i guarantee you the most expensive commodity for instance on earth is the anointing and when you have the anointing we used to jokingly say it sometimes with a jimmy how that we watch people who we know do not know one maybe one twentieth of the business principles we should know but because they possess the most expensive commodity on earth which is the anointing and its ability to provide supernatural solutions they exempt themselves from the tide and the grip of mammon so god's call for us in this season as believers to exempt us from the economic turmoil that is whipping the nations and that will inevitably come and lash a lot of people in nigeria is not only to surround ourselves with valuable things valuable things are important but be the value yourself and we have that advantage because the holy ghost is here to help us that's why i said your greatest business strategy in this season is to labor in the spirit and carry something authentic and supernatural you will enter the sabbath of your life do you believe what i'm saying please believe it i can sell palm oil is it not when you need palm oil that you buy it are we together i have palm oil in industrial scale but until there is a demand but you see let me tell you something the rev the world revolves around certain things that will never um, run out of demand one of it is the anointing one of it is the realities that come from the life of a man in partnership with the holy spirit such that even in your business you are offering much more than the product first and foremost you have risen to a point where you have become so valuable then any other valuable thing around you only becomes a support not the basis for your confidence do you understand what i'm saying As harsh as the economic climate is, there are people moving as if it doesn't exist in Nigeria. Please, don't ever deceive yourself that everybody is crying. Let me tell you why we all look like we are crying. Because people have found out that if you don't cry with others, the, the anger and the pain, they will fight you back. So they just cry and say, Kai, honestly, God is, is faithful. But the truth is not everybody is crying. There are people who are far from crying. They have found a key. Every one naira that seems to disappear did not go out of earth. It's somewhere. It's in the hands of those who have paid the price to become valuable. I made up my mind that as God grants grace, I will pay the price to be so valuable. Because by God's grace, my life and this ministry should not come to a point where we are stranded and the purposes of the kingdom becomes jeopardized simply because of a, a God called Mammon. Look at me. Do you know that there are many of our families we have tried to bring them maybe for the meetings and they may not want to listen. But how many of you know that if we buy something tomorrow and we say everybody should come and line up? Vim, Omo, sewing machine, bikes. You will see people who swore that they will never come here you see them standing even if they will not use it they will get it and go and sell it and quickly use the money that's the reality of economic hardship and from the vision the lord showed me listen people will do things that you will not imagine do you know in the bible women ate their children the bible said can a mother forget her child this one a mother remembered as he ate the child that's what finances can do you talk about prostitution is child's play when poverty hits people they will make calls that they, they not made for years you see if you do not empower your people don't blame them for perversion and i found out that you do not judge spiritual seriousness just from the face you can see someone praying but knows that there are seven people whose daily bread are dependent upon them they will go and sleep with any allergy anywhere and bring the money they will even bring it and so project 10,000. 
Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus. I exempt myself. From this economic hardship. Say it in the name of Jesus. I exempt myself. From this economic hardship. The Bible says when men say there is a casting down. For you. It says you will say there is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. There is a lifting up. But if you don't believe this. Sooner or later. You will have to face the bitter reality. Of this prophetic word. Because it will happen. I want to be honest with you. I'm not one person who just prophesies everything I see. But I, I, I salute the government of this nation. I know that they are doing their best with what they know. And whatever covenant they are part of. But I, I want to tell you one truth here. I don't see transformation happening very soon. Let me tell you the truth. All that I've, and, and I, I, I don't mean to insult anybody, but a lot of people have given so many prophecies. You are going to see boom, not 2016. It will happen for those who have the strategies. But as far as the world is speaking, you have not seen tears. Wait till July finishes. I've, I'm telling you what I've seen. You will see people sit down and cry like children. I'm not talking of illiterates. You will sit down and gather your degree and shed tears on it. But for those who are hearing this thing and will pay the price to become valuable, I tell you, you will rise as if the devil does not exist. It has nothing to do with age. It has nothing to do with level of education. Hear me. It has nothing to do with gender. It has everything to do with having perceptions and receiving God's strategy for now. Don't sit down and confuse yourself saying this and that. I'm an astute businessman. Just keep quiet and let the Lord speak to you. I'm not daft. I understand business. If you hear me speak to you like this, it is what the Lord is saying per season. Let me tell you, what will give you bread is what God is saying, not what you know. What God is saying, the direction of God is the direction of favor. The direction of God is the direction of life. It's God speaking to us. You must challenge yourself to be valuable in this season. The devil is a liar. Kai, the devil is a liar. There is a spirit in Asia called Quatsi Quata. That's what the Bible calls Mammon. It's a spirit. Many of you have seen it. It's the image of a flying serpent, a flying dragon. That is the exact picture of Mammon. It's a spirit that will compel the nations to bow to its leadership. I assure you, many people will bow. The concept of 666 is not just something you receive on your hand and receive on your forehead. It's already happening. When a system compels you, receiving the mark is not just having a physical inscription. It's coming under the sovereign rule of that system so that you have no options. You have received the mark. Are we together? But God is going to grant us grace. We will come out in another dimension. No, 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 no. Listen, let me tell you. I don't know about you. But Koinonia will not bow to this system. There is a superior covenant. We have the rod of a higher priesthood. No devil, no spirit, no system. Will make us change our message. To tone down the apostolic work God has given. So that we can attract certain kinds of wealthy individuals. That's what is happening to pastors right now. There are certain messages you cannot preach. If it is not rich man friendly. Get set to sweep your church by yourself. So you have to tone down certain things. There are certain mainstream TV programs right now. Where you are not permitted to teach certain topics. It used to be that you can't mention the name of Jesus. But now they've taken it to another level. Certain topics should not be taught on mainstream. If you teach about pressure, how to manage it, how love, how people can, can come together, a gospel of universalism, marry anything, anyhow, anywhere, doesn't matter. You are, you are welcome. 
the mainstream invites you but the moment you have an outspoken voice the system will strangle you and economic empowerment lack of it is satan's weapon of mass destruction it's worse than backsliding are we together pray in one minute and say i must be exempted in this season please pray 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 are you praying oh every time the devil tried to bring his arsenal and fight the church god is always one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead one strategy ahead Keep praying. Raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. I tell you, we will not bow. Hey! Your banner high, we shine your light so bright. We sing in awe of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in awe of you. The grace to be valuable that when men say there is a casting down the bible says your gates shall be continually open it will not be short day or night right that you will receive the forces of the gentiles that's what the bible says you can be valuable and exempt yourself from the economic whiplash hear me I'm not talking of business i'm not talking of investments i'm talking of being so valuable carrying something that cannot be found in the earth realm carrying something that is not of an earthly origin hallelujah Please sit down. Sit down. I told you there will be lots of impartations we'll pray. My passion is that something will come upon your life. Listen, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When this glory of God comes on a man, it will change you. You will veto laws and walk as if Satan does not exist. Never trivialize the anointing. It's a big deal. I'm not talking of being anointed where you are competing with people and fighting. No. God raises you by his grace and puts you in a pedestal. No mammon. No devil. No policy affects you. It's a realm. 
it's a dimension we frown at the supernatural because we think we're in an intellectual realm many times when pastors speak a lot of business people just say these guys are daft they don't know what they're saying ah, yeah, 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 yeah. the voice of god the bible says the lord is my shepherd that is why i will not want the lord is my shepherd a shepherd guides he knows where the green grasses are he said he leads me he leads me and thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it isaiah 48 verse 17 right i am the lord that teacheth thy hands to profit some of you this is what you will need you will step into a place and men will look for you who said where you are staying is too far you have not carried something when you carry something listen let me tell you when you know you are anointed when no price is too much to meet you you are really anointed when no price is too much to meet you have you watched people during foil scarcity they have their money but they still kill and they are not angry that's how valuable foil is when you get to a point where people don't mind trekking from anywhere to say i have learned that the wisdom of god is upon your mouth and we have come as a nation that's where joshua selman is going to Listen, Koinonia is not an exclusive reserve of preachers. Power was never for preachers. Power is for them who will survive in this season. Because there are gates that you must stand against. And it takes the anointing. It takes unction, not stories, not preaching. Unction. Listen, churches are closing because there's no results. We argue and say it doesn't matter, but they are closing. The devil is closing them. The devil is closing them. People are coming in with devilish policies against the church. You know why? They have not seen our relevance. By the time a city cannot do without the church, no devil will close it. No devil will close it. Listen. So the key is not just making noise. The key is rising to that point. Please hear me. When you become valuable, listen, listen. If I give you 500,000 to go and invest, you can make money. If I give you a product to sell, if this is 100 naira everybody you sell to you will sell at 100 naira so you move at their pace but when you become valuable your reward is left to the perception of your benefactors one person can see you and give you 100,000 because that's what he perceives the next person can give you 10 million because that's what he perceives is the key to accelerating ourselves to enter that wealthy place let me tell you, some levels of businesses are too slow to supply the funds required for kingdom advancement. It takes being valuable. The queen of Sheba, there was no word on Solomon. She carried her treasure to Solomon. There are Shebas, there are Cyruses that must arise with their treasure. And I'm praying prophetically that someone tonight, an unction, an unction, an unction from the throne, an unction from the throne will come upon someone that will change your life where your voice becomes like the voice of God. Listen, 
let me tell you this there will be no longer begging in the church all that depending on the world system no the key is not to sit down waiting for someone to employ you as good as that is the key has been given to us the Holy Ghost handing you the keys that can open any door and you will watch mammon mammon will watch you and not be able to do anything listen i saw this in the vision that the lord showed me many people will be constrained their, their life it will be as if they should die because the doors are closed let me quickly talk about the two points we're rounding up there is a key that will conquer exhaustion in this season please write it down there are many weary people and it's natural to be weary but let me tell you the key please hear me i want you to write it it's a very simple key spend time praying in the spirit spend time i didn't say pray in the spirit at will carelessly when you want spend time praying in the spirit i want you to fan your prayer life in a dimension that will be too hot for any devil bishop oyedeko said no matter how mad a man is no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire in the name of madness are we together you want to survive the tides brothers and sisters let me tell you your prayer altar must be like the seven times hotter fire that they threw the hebrew boys the bible says those who threw them themselves were burnt to death are we together you lie down on your bed you turn a little where your prayer creates an effect you enter your house as you are shouting in tongues something is happening you are shaking gates prayer read your bible has always been the key to true apostolic and prophetic revival when you pray let me tell you no matter how dead your spiritual life is when you invest in prayer you will burn that devil to nonsense he must give you more. i don't mean prayer that you are just asking and begging and crying that's why i said pray in the spirit because for many of us our prayer in understanding is petition and languishing and pain and anger but you lock yourself and you pray i'm not just saying when you are in your prayer room you are moving on the road you are praying beneath your voice somebody drops a charm at you it backfires on him by night he has become mad are we together someone is carrying a talisman and you are sitting down and you are going to Savo he will drop at main gates because the fire is too hot he makes listen he makes his ministers wind spirits right his angel spirit and his ministers flames I've said it again I pity the herbalist that will make concoction and call my name. I've, it's, it's not only that it will not work. If it didn't work, he has still insulted me. He will fry to death physically. Physically. I'm not, I'm not motivating you. You think they've not tried it? How can you be leading a ministry like this and not tried it? Only God knows till we get to heaven before we know how many poisons we have eaten. Let me tell you something. When your prayer life is alive and healthy, anytime you are walking, just imagine in your head fire, literal fire. Are we together? John Wesley said, Set yourself on fire, and the whole world will come to watch you burn. Set yourself on fire. Stop discussing things with people who cannot help you. Go and lock yourself. Your body says, I'm tired. You say, you are joking. As you begin to pray, you will first feel weak for a few minutes. Keep praying. 
It's normal. Just keep praying. Ah, when you touch that escape velocity, you will touch a realm where strength you cannot explain will land upon you. You plan to pray for one hour, you will stretch five hours. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Nobody starts praying just out of comfort. It's like you are starting. Shake it a bit. You are tired. You are moving. You are tired. Keep praying. Don't say, ah, this and that. The devil will tell, ah, there's something in the fridge. Have you, don't just keep praying. Oh, apostle, I'm praying and thinking about women. Keep praying. That's what he's supposed to solve. There is a level to which the fire will be too hot. Your flesh must burn and allow your spirit accent. Listen, when the Holy Ghost is called fire, it's not just what we do in church. Fire, fire, no. He's real fire. Fire is a mystery. Those who will pray in this season will record unbelievable breakthroughs. Believe me. Travel. You pray in the spirit. Thank God we have a very robust prayer department. You come there and stretch it out with destiny. After two hours, your antenna is to the heavens. Any demon is flying above you, they hang there. They hang there because you are passing. You are not even praying. The fire will roast every devil around anywhere. That's what we are talking about. Listen, many of us are too cold. That's why the devil will come and sit on your destiny. And it will look like nothing is happening. There are cold churches. A spirit will arise from somewhere and just come and sit upon the man of God and his wife and his family. But for Koinonia, no way. Shout no way. Fire. When there is fire burning, somebody will come with migraine. As he's crossing that, 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 that junction to enter Koinonia, the migraine will just leave. That's fire speaking. That's fire speaking. It works. But if you walk it, it's not a gift. It's a labor in the spirit. This is the labor dimension of spiritual growth. Men will pay you. Let me tell you. Your, your, your job is to just become genuinely anointed by the power of God. And you watch what God will do in your life. It's what a Jimmy calls transformational wealth. That dimension of wealth that is tied to people rewarding you. Because the last time they shook your hand, every gate opened. Every every gate open just by shaking you do you think they want to be your friend absolutely absolutely praying in the spirit becoming valuable praying in the spirit becoming valuable the third key in this season is the power of corporate fellowship the power of corporate fellowship if the devil can successfully isolate you in this season just know that you are quarter to die are we together there is a difference between isolation and solitude once the devil wants to destroy you let me tell you what he will do look up please he will use offense huh? and push away everybody every intercessor in your life you will fight with him everybody who has grace and love for you you will fight with him he will push every relevant person push you to the wall alone and then that's where you sit down there and become a victim of his assaults a corporate life is a powerful key in the realm of the spirit the power of a corporate life that you come together and where i am almost giving up as you land with your fire based on unity of faith and the spirit of brotherhood before my fire jacks up your fire is roasting every devil that i came with are we together corporate fellowship how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity it is like the oil that flows from the head of Aaron that priest down to his bed down to his skirt he said for there the Lord has commanded the blessing corporate life I'm a man of God of myself. You will pay for it in this season. You need corporate grace. Corporate grace. Corporate grace. Because no matter what you have seen, you will need that. Sometimes that corporate grace will help you confirm if the path you are walking is of God. The devil can isolate you and you just keep moving and you are flattering yourself until you land in fire. 
Are we together? But Koinonia, we are going to pray. I don't know about you, but for as long as you are genuinely connected to this ministry, you must be exempted from this nonsense that is ravaging nations. It's like an angel of death is is entering families. Bam! Sickness, incurable diseases. Have you heard recently how people are dying just from headache? They say somebody has headache before they rush him to the hospital. He's dead. How come on? A woman is pregnant. Just when labor starts, she becomes deaf and dumb. Then she dies. We are going to drive that devil out of Zaria. Are you ready to pray? No, we are going to pray. There is a church in Zaria and we will pray. We will pray and drive it far and say we surround this city with a mystery that makes any enchantment not to be able to thrive. We represent God's seat of, of governance in this city and we must pray. There's no room for carelessness. We must pray. Lift your voice and pray in tongues for a while. Make sure you participate, everybody. Don't be tired. We are praying. Young and old, everyone pray. Japarapa to soto preka teke repeka tosh. Enkrete seka te barada barata kashige de barada ba. Rante ke te pro soto paka rada barada barada ba kasa paka te preka de barada bosh. Zike te ke te karata kata prada kada barada ba ka. Japaka raka to soto preka te. Enkrete te go soto koto barada barada ba. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Anointing. Sing it as a prayer from the depth of your heart. family members are depending on us not our preaching the activity of the power of God upon our lives there are people standing here let me tell you listen this thing that I saw there are families I know I saw it happening to in that vision and I like you to pray you are not desiring the anointing out of covetousness you need it there are, there are thrones and dominions that must be subdued and Apostle Joshua Selma may not be there. The goal is not to have one superstar. The goal is that you carry fire and go to your regions and begin to speak the purposes of God. And while you are doing that, God will compel men to lift you. It has nothing to do with ministry. Please, I'd like you to pray and say, Father, let a strange unction fall upon my life. Oh, let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. Let the earthly become heavenly. 
in this season they that will survive must be men of power authentic unction unction beyond imagination unction beyond argument unction beyond argument unction beyond argument ta 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 ba ta ka parakata lord send that fire upon my life send that fire upon my gifts send that fire upon my degree send that fire upon my phd send that fire upon my business send that fire upon my company send that fire upon my church send that fire upon my family Oh yes, send that fire upon my life. Send that unction upon my life. The earnest expectation of creation awaits my manifestation. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, listen. One encounter with the anointing can give you an open door that your lifetime will not exhaust it if you believe what I'm telling you. One encounter, one, one encounter can open a financial door for you that will wipe your tears. One encounter can make you a friend to somebody who will pay your being a friend with him forever one encounter listen listen hallelujah i'd like you to pray a prayer you've heard us pray it here but i want you to pray it with all your heart everyone appointed to reward my grace i compel them to appear go ahead and pray it's not enough to have an anointing there are men who can reward your grace. There are institutions. Send them, oh God, to Koinonia. Send them to your people. Men and women. Who need what you carry? Your entrepreneurial anointing. Your leadership anointing. Your spirit of motherhood. Send them to my life, oh God. Men and women who have what it takes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Look up. Look up. I know very anointed men and women. They love God passionately, but they have never met the people assigned to bless them. You don't preach for money. You don't carry the anointing just for money. But you see, God designed it in such a way that as you dispense the realities of the kingdom, there is a feedback system that should empower you so you continue being effective. Are we together? Listen. The day you stand in the presence, you see, many of us are around people who love our gifts, but do not have the grace to reward it. Are we together? You can labor and pray and fast and go and preach somewhere. 
and someone will pat your back and say wow you are an awesome man of god i've never seen a man of god in this state like you that's not enough reward but there is a way you can have an encounter and someone will come and bring a generator buy you a car and say what does it take to stop you from thinking about the finances if you are such a voice i should sponsor you rising to any level there are men like that there are some of us the value you have now let me tell you sincerely the value you have now you is is enough for you to be blessed forever but you have not encountered those who have what it takes listen there are pastors hear me who until you preach somewhere where your helpers are that's what will expand your church all of a sudden it will be like they are hearing you for the first time yes i know there are millions of men of god in nigeria but there are others assigned to honor you 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 can be singing singing songs laboring and traveling from pillar to post but if you can discern god can send you to somebody who has the means but needs your music when it was time for the lifting of david a spirit was upon saul and saul needed a musician to drive it all of a sudden they went and fished out david how many times did david play for saul when he played just once saul loved him there are circles that i have entered and i ministered once and God connected me to people who will bless me forever. And that day, it wasn't even as if I was saying anything. It was just that God connected me to people who will be blessed. Tomorrow we're in Asaba. A mighty meeting happening in the stadium. And we're going to minister. They started preparing for this meeting tomorrow one year. One year. They came to book one year in advance. They have been praying logistics, publicity all over the city. And we are going to go and storm the gates of hell. There is some, you are not assigned everywhere. Look, you need to pray that those assigned to honor what you carry. Otherwise, you'll be frustrated trying to be everything to anybody. Lift your voice one more time and say, direct them, oh God. Direct them. Direct them to me. Oh, in this season, direct my blessers. Direct those you have sent to be blessed by my ministry. Direct those you have been sent to be blessed by my business. Shabakata Bosh on the Prozasike Ruta Sabarikata. Direct them. You are a prophet, but not to everyone. That God will bring the ears of those who have been anointed to hear your voice. You are an apostle, not to everyone. That God will direct the people, the institutions. Hallelujah. going to be praying that in this season please hear me that in this season God will grant you grace to have passion for the house of God that you will not allow the devil corner you somewhere and destroy you and destroy your family he said as for me and my house I don't know about you but as for me I have made up but the Bible says they that be planted no flimsy excuses oh we are tired today they that be planted in the house of god they will flourish in the courts of our god i'd like you to pray passionately and say lord grace and passion for your house grace and passion grace and passion for your house supernatural grace supernatural passion for your house for your house for your house hallelujah
Hallelujah. We are rounding up. One category of people who will be exempted from any nonsense in this season are passionate and addicted soul winners. Listen, listen. There was a time they needed money to pay for tax. It was a period that they needed money desperately. They had come to collect tax. And Jesus said, go and catch fish. And fish in the Bible is symbolic of souls. When they caught those souls in that mission work, they found money. As they were preaching, God provided a way. As they were preaching, fishers of men, they went to fish and they said, open the mouth of that fish. As that fish testifies the greatness of God and confesses with his mouth the lordship of Christ, you engage a law automatically that brings you wealth. Hear me? Please believe what I'm saying. There are many people here who love God. We are prayer warriors, but we are not soul winners. You stand up alone and drag yourself to Koinonia. You wave your roommates. You wave your family members. You come here and get blessed. While you are getting blessed, the devil is using them to destroy your blessing. You go back home. A soul winner is an intercessor. Lord, you must change my family members. There are people who can come on Friday and say, look, I'm going around this place. Have you heard about Koinonia? You've never really come. You see, this is our shame. Big boy, big girl. There are no big boys and big girls in the kingdom. It takes passion. When you are doggedly involved in soul winning, you schedule seasons of exemption. I can tell you this. I can tell you this. Are we together? You are in your office. You are there and you leave every other person. Someone tells you, uh -uh, um, the devil is trying to manipulate my life. Or God Jordan did something today that blessed me so, so much. Some people came to his shop to buy books. And the way they began to talk, at once he knew it was a demonic situation. God has given you spiritual intelligence. There is a way you hear people talk. What they are saying in the realm of the spirit is, I need help. You just listen to them and say bye-bye. The moment they began to talk, you know, Oga Jordan said this and that. They wanted to see me and he said, oh, it may not be easy to see me. But he bought communion and took a bike and came and said I should pray on the communion. And returned it back and gave the people. And I was looking at him. I said, why won't he explode? Let me tell you. If God, if your life becomes an epitome of support for God's interest, forget about begging. This is the God I serve. You may not know all you need to know, but that your life can find space to bring God. This is how this ministry started. Every night, somebody was dragging somebody. Come and get filled with the Holy Ghost. Come and get born again. You may not have the power to change them, but you have what it takes to invite them. Some of you, 50 naira is what you need to draw a soul. Ah, Koinonia has a crowd. It's not about competition of crowd. It's about destinies that must change. Are we together? What's wrong with calling your loved ones and say, there is, there is a platform now to hear this online. Since you think you are too sick to come, connect to the miracle service. You see, let me tell you something. This is what we do that produces some of the results. Anybody that is too big to win souls is too big to experience the favor of God. If you are too big to win souls, too big to win souls, ah, I preached and they insulted me. So what? Didn't Jesus say it? Blessed are you when men persecute and revile you. Rejoice! For so they did the prophets and the rest. You have social media platforms that you can use as platforms to draw people to the house of God where they can be blessed. You see, until you see yourself as part of what God is doing, you are not entitled to his blessings. When you see yourself as somebody who just comes for koinonia, leave the workers and the ministers. When you exempt yourself, you also exempt yourself from that covenant of blessing. He said, if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. I'd like you to pray before I speak over our lives Lord grace to be intentional 
about saving people from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray grace to be a conduit for someone to be filled with the Holy Ghost grace to be a channel for someone to receive the teachings that will change their life hallelujah please lift your hands i want to pray for you and i want you to believe it praise the lord this prayer is is not just i know that i pray impartations every time don't you think you are getting the same thing you see one thing with grace is when it comes yes i know that some of us it's not yet time for manifestation but you can begin to do something with it are we together one day instead of dragging somebody to go for prayer department prayer before the prayer department teach the person on the baptism in the holy ghost and try to lay hands on the person by yourself before you go everybody must have room to start something if someone is sick don't just say here is apostle's number here is head of department prayer here is assistant head of department here is a jimmy or pastor femi or pastor alpha or every any any other person no you can tell him look i agree with you I am part of a family that has a healing anointing and I want to agree with you. If you pray with the person and nothing happens, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Everybody you see had an occasion to begin to exercise themselves. Anointings are useless if you are not ready to use them. God does not waste. He said, gather the fragments that there be no waste. Are we together? I want to pray for you. There are three things I'm going to pray for you. The anointing for uncommon wisdom that's the first thing i'll pray for you let me tell you i know many foolish people it's not by age i have seen this ancient wisdom upon my life as young as i look i have seen it i know it is real i saw it in people i coveted it with my heart and the day it landed upon me i knew the anointing for wisdom strategies two the anointing for favor you need favor in this season favor is not when you do things by yourself favor is when god raises men to do things for you it's not about having money it's about the appearance of men in your life to wipe your tears it's called favor number three the supernatural power of the holy ghost to provide solutions to people there are sick people there are oppressed people waiting for joshua selman to heal everybody's idolatry that's not god's design god's design is that you become an extension of what we represent that when we cannot be there you can arise they tell you a woman is failing to give birth you lay hands on her stomach and ask her to give birth there and then no cs it has nothing to do with being a pastor or being a prophet you don't need to carry any ministry you just need to carry the spirit of grace lift your hands the spirit of wisdom spirit of wisdom there is a level of wisdom that is beyond age it's not found in the realm of men it comes from heaven job was asked a question when cometh this wisdom where is it where is it they ask the place of the dead and he says it's not with us we don't know where it is he said only god knows the place thereof hmm? whose price is higher than rubies he said do not wisdom cry her price is far above rubies right he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The grace for supernatural wisdom, uncommon wisdom, let it come upon your life in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 
from today you begin to function at a frequency of wisdom that no man will begin to gain say or resist number two the bible says all who saw esther loved her favor there is such a thing as favor there is such a thing as divine supernatural not man-made arranged favor favor from strangers when those who know you favor you it makes sense when a stranger is moved by the holy ghost to serve the purposes of god in your life your business and your ministry then you know that that's favor receive that grace for favor receive that grace for favor receive that grace for favor listen some of you before the end of this night strange testimonies strange testimonies you are thinking of buying a bible someone brings it you are thinking of buying something someone brings it now that's favor you are looking for a place to pray someone says i have my room anytime you need to pray i give you that's favor you are trusting God to travel for a meeting somewhere. You are stranded in cars. Someone says, I will sponsor you. Pay for your flight and bring you back. Receive that order of testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, it will come upon you. Believe me. Believe me. You will carry it bodily and go out with it hallelujah the last prayer lift your hands this one will come upon you big listen we need miracles signs and wonders the ministry of miracles has not ended signs and wonders the sick healed the oppressed delivered you command breakthroughs in the lives and destinies of men. Don't just waste words as you speak to people. You influence the realm of the spirit to provide solutions for people. Lift your hands. Father, I pray over your people. That ordinary life, that ordinary preaching, that doing things ordinary from today, step into the supernatural. Step into the supernatural. Step into the supernatural. The unction for signs, wonders, and miracles. Let it come upon your life right now. The ability to see. The ability to speak. The prophetic word of God. Ay, 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 ay. It will come on some of you. I release it upon you. In the name of Jesus. Listen. Some of you from today. As you stand close to people. Just contact with them. It will be like a register open in the realm of the spirit. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. The way God can have respect for the prayer of a man and solve another person's problem because of who prayed. In the Bible, God had respect for the prayers of men. Elisha prayed, right? Well, it was Elijah that prayed that God would open the eyes of his servant. He didn't ask the servant whether he had faith. He had a covenant of answered prayer. And because of it, a man's eyes was opened. I pray for you in the name of jesus christ one more time may your eyes be open may your eyes be open hallelujah before anything will happen to you and to your loved ones may it never escape your vista you will see it hallelujah and i want to pray for people who the devil has manipulated their visions to a point that they no longer trust what they see you started seeing well but the devil wanting to confuse you i tell you i see an anointing coming on people 
the devil wanted to confuse you and started aberrating your vision and what you started seeing stop coming to pass in the name of jesus christ i pray for you right now receive clarity 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 by the power of the holy ghost we correct that anomaly in the name of jesus I don't know the spirit that is lingering around the body of Christ giving men bad visions taking advantage of their prophetic dimensions and confusing them so that their words will not be heard and so that their visions will not be seen some of you now you have closed yourself to visions because the things you saw look corrupted I pray for you again may that spirit that manipulates your visions be casted out of your life right now give me one minute the last prayer point now look at me one of the most frustrating things about the prophetic is to see things and not have the power to make them happen are we together the apex of the prophetic is not the revelatory dimension i can see that god wants to bless pastor alpha but do i have the power to transport that reality you can see that you are already a millionaire in the spirit but do you have the unction that it takes capacity to draw things from the spirit to find expression so let me tell you because many of us do not have capacity the devil has made rubbish of our ministries because you prophesy to men and what you saw is true but it never happens and the devil says you see this person is lying and over time you have seen that your seeing is correct but the unction to establish it in the physical realm is not there but I pray for you. Not only will you see, not only will you speak, power to draw it to pass. I release it upon you. 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 Hallelujah. Prophecy whets the appetite of men, it takes power to make it happen the creative power of God by this time tomorrow it was not a suggestion it was created prophetically go and come back with your miracle child that's creation so God can show me that Shadrach should enter a dimension in the spirit but do I have the unction to make that chapter in the spirit manifest that's authentic power one more time I pray for you everything that makes your prophecy barren of manifestation i command it to dry up right now i command it to dry up right now i command it to dry up right now you will speak to men and it will happen speedily you will speak to men and it will happen speedily hallelujah before we sit down very quickly you are here you've not given your heart to the lord you've heard of the prophecy and the things that God is going to be doing in the months ahead but this is only for those the exemption is for those in Christ alone God bless you whoever wants to join this gentleman God is convicting you and saying you need to make your ways right or you are you have given your heart to the Lord but for some reason you found yourself going haywire and it's time to return to Jesus wherever you are inside outside make your way to the front they are not too alone the Holy Ghost is speaking to men. Please, if God asks you to come, find your way out quickly. Clear the way for them outside. God is speaking to people and they're on their way coming. Appreciate them, Koinonia. God bless you. If you're coming, please come quickly. If you're coming, please come quickly. If you're coming, please come quickly.
if you are coming come quickly don't let the devil keep you down it's the beginning of a new season for you i believe there are still several people outside god is speaking to as he speaks to you make your way to the front and join these lovely people in front hallelujah praise the lord i know that every one of you came out by the leading of the spirit some of you are giving your heart to the lord for the first time some of you are rededicating your life you're being serious with god it doesn't matter what category i want you to pray this prayer from the depth of your heart you're not reciting a poem let your heart be open say after me lord jesus i love you and i believe in you with all my heart i declare that you are my savior and you are my lord i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that from today henceforth i am a child of god washed by the blood of jesus with the life of god in me i declare that the power of sin is broken over my life forever in the name of jesus christ now let me pray for you father thank you for bringing these ones the bible says as many as will come to you you will no wise cast away bless them and lift them and honor them glorify yourself and your name in their lives every struggle that they have we declare that it melts away right now in the name of jesus lord i pray that you will really bless them and honor them in the name of jesus christ i bless you with the blessings of heaven in jesus name i pray Thank you so much. I'd like you to follow a gentleman with a white tie waving his hands and he'll have your details and will communicate to you. God bless you. God bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.